Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. so happy that you join us this morning. This is going to be a blessed day. I feel it in the atmosphere. God is going to bless some people today. And before we get started, I want us to pray right now because I feel like if we pray and we go before the throne of grace, that the Lord is going to release some things from me to give to you that's going to bless you today. So Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to come. We thank you for every listener on this TV program today, God. We thank you, Lord, for opportunities to reach the people with your word. And Lord, as I open my mouth to speak today, you speak through me. You let the words flow that you want to come out so that people will be able to receive and be able to accomplish some of the things that they are believing for and that their faith will be lifted. And we believe you to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's just so great to be with you today. I have been so excited about facing something new, believing for something new, going after something new accepting what God has already done and believing him to do even more. I want to talk with you today on the subject of pressing forward toward a higher calling. You know, we can stay at a certain plateau for so long until we tend to become comfortable. But I really feel in the spirit realm that God is getting ready to let us press forward and to help us to realize what's ahead and stop being satisfied and comfortable with where we are. If you want to move forward, you have to be like Paul. And Paul said in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, Brothering, I count myself to have apprehended. I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, not just a mediocre calling, not just the same old, same old, but Paul say, I know there's something ahead that's greater than what I've experienced in the past. I know there's something ahead that's going to allow me to be a greater person in the future than I've been in the past. There's something ahead that's going to give me a greater anointing, more opportunities to do more for Christ, to be more um, reliable, to be more satisfied, to be more in tune with the word of God. In other words, Paul is saying, if you go on down to um, the 10th verse, it said that he wants to know him. You know, when you get, when you want to know somebody, you want to learn about them. You want to learn what they like. You want to learn what you can do to help them out. You want to learn what you can do to make them happy. You just want to be available to him. And so this is what Paul is saying. And this is what we as Christians should be saying. But this message today is not just for Christians. It's for saved people and unsaved people. Because wherever you are right now, with the grace of God, with the power of God, with the favor of God, you can move forward. You can move to another level. As we enter into a new season, in order to reach our purpose and achieve our goals, we must forget those things in the past and let go of them. You know, sometimes we're holding on to past things, but those things are in the past. I heard somebody say the other day, I think I read this in a book, that the past is a canceled check. The present is cash in your hand. The future is a promissory note. So all we have right now is what we have in our hands at this moment. So I say to you, what are you going to do with what you have? 
Where do you go from here? Have you made any plans to do something different? Have you set any goals to do something different? Are you believing God to do something different for you now that he has not done before? Can you raise your level to the degree where you will say, it doesn't look like this is going to ever happen. I've been believing for it to happen for a long time, but some way, somehow, God is getting ready to do something. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this out of my mouth. I'm confessing these things on a daily basis. I'm saying some things that I know God is getting ready to do for me. Have I prayed for them in the past? Yes. Have I believed for them in the past? Yes. But guess what? This is the time. This is the season. How do I know that? Because he puts it in your spirit, man. And when he puts it in your spirit, man, he's, he's letting you know that this is your season. It's your time. God, I hear people all, all the time saying, it's your season. It's your time. And I'm wondering, did they really hear that from God or are they just saying it out of their mouth? I want to get it from God. I want a confirmation from him. And that's what I'm depending on. And he's showing me that he's about to do some great and mighty exploits in our lives. We have to forget even the mistakes that we made in the past. You know, the things that we should have done that we didn't do, the things that God told us to do that we didn't do, the things that we did that we shouldn't have done. Let that go. God is a forgiving God. Let the past be the past. You can cast all of those things upon him because he said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Now, let's look at Paul, what Paul said in 310. We mentioned that a few minutes ago and we kind of brushed on it, but I want to read that scripture to you. It says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You see, to get to know Christ. We don't know what suffering is all about. If anybody knew what suffering was about, it was Paul. These are just little light things we go through. People talk about us, people criticize us. We, sometimes we don't have what we want when we want it and we, we can't seem to get it. But Paul went through some real suffering. Let's just talk about that for a minute. He had been talked about in the past. He had stoned, he was stoned and left for dead. He experienced jealousy from the folk in the church. He was lying on and he and, and they expected him to die when he was beaten. He was tossed into the sea and battered by the storm, false accused, arrested and thrown in jail. And while they were in jail, you know, they were still praising God, singing those praise and worship songs, counting it all joy to be able to suffer for the cause of Christ. Now, that's really getting to know Christ. That's really loving Christ. That's really putting him in the center of your life. Paul made up in his mind that he was not going to allow people or problems or circumstances or situations or anything to separate him from the love of God. And you know, that's what we have to do. We have to make up in our mind. Nobody can do that. There are some things that we have to do for ourselves. And there are some ways that the Lord blesses us and we can't give the credit to anybody else. We can't say, well, you know, I, I was in this place and this person came. Let me tell you, if you are sick in your body and the doctors tell you that they can't do you any good and the Lord touches your body and he divinely heals you, you can't give credit to anybody except to God. You got to give him the glory. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to do some great and mighty things so that at the end of the day, you will be able to say, God did it. I give God the glory. I give God the praise. I give God the honor. If we expect better things to happen for us during this season, we must stay faithful and we must stay focused. Those are the two words that the Lord gave me. Stay faithful and stay focused. Be faithful to what God has already told you to do and stay focused. Don't get out focused. Don't go out there and look at something else and it looks greater. Don't look across the fence at the grass and it looks greener. Don't be fooled and focused by things and, and that's being presented to you. Stay focused on what God has told you to do. He may not have told you to do the same thing he told me to do, but if he told me to do something, I've got to keep my mind on that. I can't say, well, I like what you're doing. I think I want to do that too. No, you can't do that. You got to stay focused on what God told you to do. What is it? I want to ask you a question right now. What is it that you're willing to give up in order to do what God has told you to do. What is it that you've gone through in the past that you feel like, or you might be going through it now, I just can't take it anymore. What is it that you face that seems so difficult that you don't know how you will ever get over it? 
how you going to ever come out of this? Lord, I've been through a lot, but God, this is a big one. I don't know how I'm coming out of this. But let me tell you what I say on my commercial, on my TV program. If you've watched it, you've heard me say this. For every problem, there's an answer. And for every decision, there's a solution. I don't care what it is, there is an answer. There is a solution. Paul was not just looking at what he was facing then, but let me tell you what Paul was looking at. Paul was looking at the fact that at the end of the day, <clears throat> at the end of his journey, that he was going to get a crown of righteousness. All of the things that you do, God is watching you. He's somebody is watching you. God is watching you. Every time you pray a prayer for someone else, God is watching you. Every time you choose to forgive your enemy, God is watching you. Every time you pay your tithe and your offering, God is watching you. There's a camera from heaven that's watching everything you do. So if it's watching everything you do, I want to do something good. I don't want to get caught doing something bad. I want to get caught doing something good. I want to get caught doing the kind of things where the Lord said, that was a good thing. I'm going to reward you openly. You did it in secret, but I'm going to reward you openly. I saw you when you fasted and prayed. I heard you when you praised me when you were going through trials and tests and trips. I heard you when you told somebody about me who wanted to give up. I was there when you told the people that you love God and that you are not going to let anything separate you from me. I heard everything you said. And you know what? Because I heard you, you have a bank account in heaven. And when you get ready to make a withdrawal, you can draw it out through prayer. I'll answer your prayer. I'll give you the desires of your heart. What we don't realize, people, is that Jesus is at the right hand side of the father making intercession for us right now. He wants us to make it. He's pulling for us. He's not standing up there waiting for us to make a mistake so he can batter up off, batter us over the head and say, you messed up. Now you have been written off. No, that's not the way he deal. He doesn't do business like that. He wants us to be saved. He wants us to be healed. He wants us to be delivered. He wants us to be set free. He doesn't want us to walk around here with chains and fetters on. He doesn't want us to walk around with burdens on our back. He doesn't want us to walk around here hopeless. He came to that we could have life and that more abundant. But we got to stop looking back. We got to stop complaining. I find myself sometimes complaining and I said, Lord, forgive me. I don't really have anything to complain about. God, look where you brought me from. Look how you answered my prayer. Look how you brought me out. Look how you delivered me. Look how you healed me. Look how you set me free. And I've got the audacity to complain. I have to ask for forgiveness. I have to repent. You see, moving forward is a decision you have to make for yourself. Nobody else can make that decision for you. I can tell you all day long, you know, God is going to heal you. He's going to deliver you. He's going to pay your bills. He's going to give you a husband. He's going to give you a house. He's going to give you a car. But you have to believe that in your heart. You have to know that God loves you. You have to know that he has your name written in the palm of his hand and that he knows you by that name and that he's concerned about you. You have to make up your mind that you are going to stop looking out of the rear view mirror and start looking out of the windshield. Have you ever thought about why the windshield is so much wider than the rear view mirror? That came to me the other night. Because what's behind me is not as important because I'm going forward. I can't hit what's behind me if I keep going forward. The only way I can hit you from behind is I have to put it in reverse. But if I keep it in drive and I keep going straight ahead, I need all that windshield so I can see what's ahead of me. Because what's ahead of me is greater than what's, what, what was behind me. I'm thinking about the children of Israel. If they hadn't kept looking back, a seven-day journey wouldn't have taken a 40, made a 40-year pilgrimage for their trip. But they kept looking back. God, when we were over there, at least we knew how we were going to eat. We knew we had water to drink. They kept looking back, and God was making provisions for them every single day. You see, sometimes blessings come in bundles, and sometimes they trickle in one at a time. So you have to be ready. However he bless you, you have to, get, you have to tell him, Lord, I thank you. I, I know that somebody's going to be blessed with this word today because I prayed about it, and God tell, told me that you need this word. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Minister Hopkins is available for speaking engagements, revivals, and other church events. Email hannahopkins at aol.com or call 1-800-305-1928. To God be the glory. 
Join us Sunday at 9.30 a.m. at South 28th Avenue Baptist Church for an hour of power. Be blessed. We're talking today about moving forward, making progress, leaving those things that are behind in the past. Sometimes we're holding on to things in the past that God wants us to leave behind. Sometimes we might need to raise our level of expectation in order to receive something bigger and better than what we have in our hand, something bigger and better in the future. Sometimes you got to get rid of what you have to get what God has for you. Sometimes God might want us to be willing to exchange what we have for what he wants to give us. You need to let that soak in. Exchange what you have for what he wants to give you. We should react like Paul did. Paul was a, a real prisoner for Christ. He, when he was out there, he was a bad fellow. But when he got saved, he made it up in his mind. I'm going to put it all in. I'm not going to withhold anything. It might not be easy. You might have to cry while pressing forward. People might not understand you. People might, ha might say, why are you doing all of this? It doesn't take all of this, but you got to keep on push pushing that press button. You might lose some friends along the way. But during this season of your life, you, if you're going to move forward, you are going to have to do something different. Stop doing the same thing. Stop jumping through the same hoop. Do something different. I decided I'm going to do something different this year. I've been believing God. I'll just go ahead and share it with you since you are my partners and my friends and my prayer warriors. This, this ministry has been a struggle for me for 25 years. But this year, I want you to hear what I've got to say. God is going to open some doors for me. Some people are going to see what I'm doing, and they're going to bless this ministry. When you bless the ministry you're not giving it to me in my hand for me to spend, but you're blessing me so I can go forth and go to other places and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that. I'm forgetting the, all those years that I've not had enough money and I've had to wonder how I'm going to pay this bill at the end of the month. Now, that's, that, that's a thing of the past. This is a new day. This is a new opportunity. God is going to open some hearts and some minds and some doors and he's going to let the favor of the Lord overtake me so that I will be able to spread this gospel in other places. We, we not only do the gospel, we do community work. We do Christian counseling. We partner with organizations that help people by going in and, and physically helping do things. We, we give clothing to people as, we, as they come in who don't have clothes. There was a time when we had a program where we would go and help people clean their yards and do things around their house that they couldn't afford to pay someone to do. This is an outreach ministry to help people, not just to spread the gospel through the TV program, but to go into the community to make a difference. And, 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 and I'm, I'm stopping, I'm pausing in the middle of my sermon to say, I need your help to help me to continue to do what I'm doing because I'm not looking back, I'm going forward. And I want you to go forward with me. And how can you go forward with me? You can pray for me. You can send donations in. You can help me in whatever way you can. We should react like Paul did. It might not be easy. That's what I just said. But you must stay focused and you must stay faithful. What do I mean by staying faithful? Don't veer off. If God told you to start a ministry or to start a daycare center or to start some other business, you've got to stay focused on that and you've got to stay faithful to that. If God told you, said this year, I want you to go to church more often than you did last year. Every time it rained, don't stay at home. Don't be a sunny day Christian. Go regardless to how the weather is. Stay faithful to God. Ask God, say, Lord, what is it that I can do for you this year that I haven't done in the past? If, as you work for him, his, his blessings are working on your behalf. Many of us have not discovered who God is in our life and what he has called us to do. If I were to ask you today, what is it that God has called you to do? What are your gifts? What are your talents? 
What are you supposed to be doing in this time in your life? See, things shift as we grow older, as we move on. What you did uh, 10 years ago, no need of bragging about that. This is a new time, a new season. I hear people all the time say, you know, I started this and I started that. That's good. I'm glad for you. You did a good job. But God wants to do something new. He wants to open some more doors. He wants you to re reach some more people. Many times we put up with things from the enemy that we shouldn't be putting up with. God has given you power, not just power, but dunamis power. He said, I give you power to, to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Why are you sitting there letting the devil walk on your head when you're supposed to be stepping on his head? You got to step up to the plate. You got to be like a new sheriff in town. Look, devil, no more. I've suffered through this long enough. And you, some people might say, you trying to make God do something? No, I'm not, not trying to make God do something. I'm trying to make you do something. You got to get up and you got to make a move. You got to get so tired of what you've been going through until you say, Lord, I know there's something better for me. I'm not fussing at you today. I just want to get some points over to you to help you to understand that there's greater in the future than there was in the past. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal to us who we are and give us the wisdom and the understanding to walk in our calling. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Spirit on the inside of you to speak to you, to minister to you, to tell you what you need to do. You don't know what to do on your own. You're not that smart. You need to hear from God. You need the Holy Spirit to tell you where you need to go, when you need to go, what you need to do to help you to understand when you read the word, what the word is saying to you. You need the Holy Spirit to give you discernment. You need the Holy Spirit to give you the anointing. I can't do anything. I can't stand up here and minister to you Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and you get anything from it unless I'm anointed to do it. I can't mimic what someone else said. I got to do what God told me to do and say it the way he told me to say it. The only way we're going to be able to take the territory that is ahead of us, we must move forward because the blessings are up ahead. I can't go, I can't make reservations to go to California to, to do a speaking engagement and then stand in the corner in my house and say, I'm going to catch the airplane. I got to get in my car. I got to either go to, to the coast or go to New Orleans or go to Jackson or go to Pensacola. I've got to go somewhere and get on a plane. Otherwise, if I'm not going to fly. I'm going to just stand there in the corner. So that's what you have to do. Get up and do something. The reason it took the, the Israelites so long, I already told you that, because they kept looking back. Some of you have been believing God to give you some things and you have not yet received them. And you think this is your lot. I'll never get it. Stop letting those words come out of your mouth. Be careful the words that come out of your mouth. Start chasing. I want to I want to share a little secret with you today. You can write this down in your little black book. It'll work. Stop chasing after things. Start chasing after God. And he will in turn make things chase after you. I know that's good. I wrote it, but that's good. Stop chasing after things. Start chasing after God, and God will make things start chasing after you. Now, another reason why we are sometimes not moving forward is because we are stuck. Have you ever felt stuck? I have. Stuck in the same old place, doing the same old thing. As we look back at negative experiences, thinking about what was, the way things used to be. We begin to rehash the pain and the wound is still open. But what do we do when we get to that place? You have to make a decision that you are going to change your way of thinking, your way of speaking, your way of believing. You know what I did recently? I start changing things around in my house. I said, you know, this has been sitting here too long. This has been here too long. I said, I need to put a picture over there. I need to put another piece over there. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but as you begin to change things, look like everything looks different. It feels different. The atmosphere changes, and that's the way it is in our lives. There might be some bumps in the road, but we have to keep pressing forward. And when, when we feel like we want to give up, 
we got to start quoting the word. When the devil says, you know, well, you know, you, you're not going to ever get a good job because, you, first of all, you've gotten too old now. Nobody wants to hire you. Honey, let me tell you something. I can do what I did 20 years ago. And if I want a job today, I can go out there and get me a job. I don't want to work. I mean, I want to work, but I don't want a full-time job because ministry is work. But I do go out, and I do work sometimes. It might be raining now, but if you keep going on up the road, you're going to get some sunshine. The sun is going to shine again. Sometimes we have to press the reset button and refresh the page. Sometimes when I'm on the computer, I have to refresh the page. Fresh ideas, fresh thinking, fresh prayer, fresh fasting, fresh reading the word. Put our minds in drive. Get out of reverse mode. Stop going back down memory lane. You know, I used to... And I, I really have to pray about it now. I used to love to listen to me certain kinds of music, and it wasn't always gospel music. And something came on the other day, and it was on TV, and it sounded, there's a rainy night in Georgia. I got a feeling. And it was Brooke Benton, and I said, oh, that sounds good. And Lord, I said, you better turn that off, because if you don't, you're going to listen to that every day. Whatever comes into your mind, feeds in your spirit, man, that's who you become. If we're going to walk into a better tomorrow, we must not allow conviction to turn into condemnation. And that's a whole nother sermon. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish that. I might have to finish this sermon when I come back. But you see, the enemy brings condemnation. But God, the Holy Spirit, convicts us when we do wrong and gives us an opportunity to get it right. So don't you let what you've done wrong keep you from walking into what God has for you. But you have to repent. You have to ask the Lord to forgive you. And you got to make up in your mind, Lord, I don't want to do that anymore. Lord, if you forgive me for this time, and I know you will, I'm going to not do this anymore. Because what God wants to do is to set you free. He doesn't want to hold you in bondage of condemnation. Condemnation will keep you from praying. Condemnation will keep you from, from getting what God has for you. Condemnation will keep you in a place where you think you're moving forward, but you're going backwards. So don't condemn yourself. Ask God to forgive you. Get up, shake the dust off, and move on because the better part is up ahead. I just hope you were blessed today. When I was putting this message together, I was so blessed because it was for me just like it's for you. You know, the enemy wants to make us feel trapped and defeated and bound up in chains and fetters. But the story does not end there. This is what I want to tell you. Second Corinthians 521 tells us that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So why are we walking around in condemnation? Let's look at ourselves as Jesus looks at us. He looks at us as saved, sanctified, forgiven, and set free. I got to go now. Till this time next week, I'm Hannah Hopkins with Lifting You Higher TV Ministry saying, you be blessed.